Thank you very much for your invitation. And again, my apologies for the, His Excellency, Mr. Lahsan Haddad, who really couldn't be here and really wanted to be here with you because I think he's a fan of this, uh, of the ICD and, uh, and he follows a lot your activities. He has been appointed for some governmental activities uh, really at the latest, so I, I hope to be uh, representing him a good way. I want to also to thank the, His Excellency the Ambassador of Morocco here in Germany, who really, I mean, preceded my, my speech by a very interesting presentation about Morocco, which is very important for us in tourism. If you don't have this context and we don't, you don't have these assets, our ambassador have been talking about, you cannot develop tourism. And we are really fortunate in Morocco to have those assets, and we really build our strategy in tourism on that, because we believe that we can offer a lot. Just before talking about Morocco and just to give some words about some context in tourism, in international tourism, uh, and the trends that uh, make the team that you, you have chosen for your conference very relevant, which is creative, creative economy, sustainable tourism, and sustainable foreign investment. I think this is very important issues regarding national branding because uh, tourism is really a very important sector, and still ministers of tourism around the world still have to, uh, to struggle to, uh, to, um, to show how, how important is tourism. Although we have some figures internationally that shows that tourism is a real industry, an important one, that contributes and contributed during those last decades to the to the to the to the economic and social growth, and the deepening very important diversification and competition uh, against the destinations because they all have assets, important assets, natural assets, cultural assets, and they have some unique things to to promote. And um, tourism internationally contributes to 10% to the GDP, so it makes it. To the, to the global GDP, it makes it a very important sector in that way, but it is also an important sector in terms of creating jobs. This is what has been said by our ambassador for Morocco, but it's, it's right globally. One amongst 11 jobs created worldwide is a tourism job, direct creation job, because we know also tourism contributes indirectly to developing other sectors like agriculture, construction sectors, and, and others. And, and if you compare it as a service sector, it contributes to the, com to, the, to, the, to the commerce, I mean, 30% of the contribution. So it's also a very important sector. And some, we are, we are more than one, one uh, trillion uh, tourists around the world. So we, we have been traveled in 2014 in growth by 4.3%. Uh, and we are expected to be one, uh, one, uh, 1.8 billion uh, tourists in 2030, which means that the growth is very important. But the sharing of the market in tourism is, is evolving. Uh, in the 1980s, it used to be the, the, most, the, the most important share of tourism was going to Europe with more than 60%. And nowadays, it is less than 40, it is around 30%. And we have the growth in different regions like Africa, like, uh, like uh, Middle East and also Asia and the Pacific, which are getting uh, their part from the, this growth. So it means that there is a lot of competitions. We are more and more tourists traveling around the world, but there are also some trends making us travel differently and want some experience, some, some astonishing experiences, because travel is really has to do with experience. With, the travelers today, the consumer, are targeting, we are targeting, are really changing their way of traveling. They are looking for something different, for some, some unforget unforgettable experiences for living culture and also sharing things with the locals. This is what you said, uh, Mr. Ambassador, and it is very important. We are also facing some changes in the way we are buying tourism because of the, the, uh, the, some revolutions in terms of internet, which made really things very
very different now. We, we are talking about sharing economy, we, we are talking about social media, about how the, the mobile phones are also tools, very important tools in marketing aspects. So these are very important uh, issues regarding tourism nowadays because it means that digital content is very important because platforms are for promoting tourism are becoming very important and social medias also. But we have also a consumer which is very also aware about, uh, about the, the future of its planet. You also mentioned it, uh, uh, Your Excellency. And it is important that we preserve our planet because it's somehow our main asset for making tourism, so we need to preserve it. And also to preserve and evaluate our cultural assets because also it's something very important for people who are traveling. So this means that sustainable tourism is also a real answer to some of the issues we are facing to develop tourism. And we are also a sector that suffers a lot from any geopolitical changes and uh, what we are living nowadays, especially in the region, is, is, is very, uh, very impacting about the growth in, in tourism and the way we promote tourism. So, but we are a resilient sector. And uh, because I, I always say that, you know, traveling nowadays became, if you take the Maslow pyramid, I, you, you, I think travel is not that high as it used maybe to be when, when, we, when we draw this pyramid because people need to travel. It became something which is basic. We need to travel. So this makes it resilient. People forget and people want to travel again and to experience new things. And Regarding all those trends and all those issues, I think sustainable tourism, but also creative economy is kind of answer that we can bring if we want to develop tourism. So it was just an introduction about tourism and some thoughts I wanted to share to contribute to this team. And coming back to Morocco, of course, we, ha we have looked at all those issues when we built our strategy and we are now in the phases of updating it because we are at the midterm of our strategy because we have have a 10-year strategy plan, a strategic plan, which started in 2010, and we are now also trying to actualize this strategy and to see this new evolution of the trends and uh, and the, the new issues we have to address regarding marketing. In Morocco, we receive more than 10 million tourists, which makes us, in terms of arrivals, the first destination in Africa. And we contribute to 7% of the GDP. And we represent something like $6 billion uh, income. And the domestic tourism is also important. It's, it's, it became one of the, it's the first market for us with 32% of the activities. We have two main destinations, which are Marrakech and Egedir, which represent 70% of the activities. We have uh, facilities, important infrastructures in terms of bed, uh, bed, uh, bed capacity. We have 200, uh, two, uh, 230,000 beds now, right now, and we are expecting to double the size of the, of the, of the, of the sector. And how we built our strategy, I mean, we took into consideration all those issues and we wanted to have a destinations which can distinguish itself in the region, in the African region, but also in the Mediterranean region, where sustainable tourism is really at the heart of the strategy. And this is what I wanted to share, what I want to share with you. When we built our strategy, we really started from our assets and from the territory. So we wanted to be a bottom-up strategy. We tried to see how we can build clusters with, with making some assets, putting assets together, so touristic assets, cultural, natural, etc., in the regions and trying to build destinations because we wanted tourism to be uh, a driver for the socio-economic development in all the country and not concentrated only in one or two destinations, which is still the case to today. And we aim to develop eight destinations, eight touristic destinations, each one having its own, its own uh, positioning and, uh, and uh, sometimes based essentially on, on beach, uh, beach uh, destinations, but sometimes on cultural destinations and also on natural destinations so that we have a balanced offer of products. 
and also some destinations that are not competing together but complementing the offer that the sector is offering uh, in terms of touristic, uh, touristic offer. So this is a first pillar if you want to talk about sustainability in our destination. This is something very important to make sure that we have a good distribution of the wealth that is coming from tourists and also that it benefits to local populations. They get something from the development of the tourism. And in terms of developing the offer also, our our main issue and our main, main challenge today is to diversify our offer, to be capable of covering all the expectations of the tourists that we are bringing in Morocco in terms of beach destination, nature destinations, in terms of sports activities, in terms of event mice activities, in terms of cultural activities, which is a very important also pillar in our strategy because I talked about eight destinations. Four of them are supposed to be really concentrating on cultural assets and having a, a cultural positioning. So, for us, the culture is very important, and we are basing our strategy on, in terms of developing the offer and the product on six, on six programs, which are very important. One, which is called Azure 2020, which means to develop resorts, but some resorts that are respectful of the nature and the, 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 the destination we are developing them, and we, we put some consideration to make them more and more eco resorts. So this is a, a very important challenge for us to develop resorts that have a, a very a, an important size to make us capable to to be competitive with other beach destinations around the world, but also to make them respectful for the environment regarding to the use of water, regarding the the construction um, uh, the construction the way that we we build them, and also regarding the employment that they are creating, but also activities that that they, that they offer to the local communities around the resort so that we don't have some ghettos where we have, you know, tourists there and no interaction between the tourists and what is happening behind the resorts and especially in the mountains, in the rural areas. So our objective is to create these linkages because between big projects, important projects, to be capable to bring uh, uh, important numbers of tourists and then make it kind of also um, markets for the uh, rural areas that we have behind the mountains, the desert, and, and also uh, some destinations where we have niche activities like ecotourism. We also have a pro an important program on ecotourism and uh, which especially in the rural area. Our objective is to develop an integrated offer of product to develop also um, to activities for the women who are working there act, act, uh, with handicraft, uh, with the, some, um, some local products, the, the selling of local products, developing some, some routes in the rural areas and developing also capacity, a bed capacity, of course, adapted to the, to the situation where we are developing it. And there is also an important pro program, as I said, in terms of cultural, cultural heritage uh, marketing, which includes, which includes, I mean, uh, like you said, uh, Mr. Ambassador, the festivals, but also the development of the museums, which are very important assets, and also which includes the prom the the. the the evaluation of our medinas, which has a very important patrimony. Uh, there are ancient, ancient medinas, which are very uh, historical and important patrimony and very unique uh, kind of, uh, of, um, of destination. We are trying to develop tourism in those medinas and bring activities for people, economic activities for people who are living into the medinas, making them living places with very important uh, cultural patrimony. And we also have have a very important program with the Casbahs you, we, we are, so you are seeing here in the, in the screen to uh, like the experience in, in Spain or in, uh, in Portugal with the Posadas and uh, the, the objective is to have some va high value added uh, uh, bed capacity in those, in, in those uh, Casbahs making them, I mean preserving them because otherwise it is 
the patrimony that we are we are losing and uh, making them uh, bad capacity and offering for tourists very expe uh, uh, exceptional uh, ex experience this is regarding uh, regarding to the to the product but also when we when it comes to to, to the development of this product, of course, creative economy is very important because bringing this marketing of the cultural assets with technology is very important and this is something we are trying to work on. The ambassador talked about the cities that, we are, dev that are go under development in Morocco and they have very important programs with developing big assets, big museums, big art cities, but the important also this, those cities are also in integrating the concept of smart cities. So there is this reflection in Casablanca, for example. We have Rabat, which is positioning itself as cultural destination, green destination. So there are also a lot of issues with urban tourism that we are thinking about. And when, when it comes to, um, to the product offer, we are also working on the touristic environmental environment, which is important because when you bring tourism, the infrastructure is important, but also all the experience they are going to have in the city, in the destination is important with, with the transportation, with, uh, with the, the customs at the airport, with all those, those facilities and the ur urban infrastructure is very important. So we are working with local government because this is very important to have a partnership, public partnership public region partnership, especially in the process, Morocco is in, under a process of regionalization, important process, so the regions are going to have more and more prerogatives in terms of developing tourism, and it is important that they are aware of all those issues, so that we work with them, and we just signed this year a charter for touristic cities to uh, engaging the local government in developing the cities in a way that they are friendly for tourists, but also, of course, for the, for the people who are living there. And we included this concept of smart cities, of sustainable tourism, of accessibility. So all those assets are included in this charter. Then we also work a lot on the marketing. We have also a marketing strategy, which is supported by our tourism board, uh, our tourism board in Morocco and with its representations abroad. Our strategy first started with the traditional markets, which are the European, European markets, markets and the traditional ones which are closer to Morocco. And we started with some specific segments. And our challenge today, which are, you know, the couples that come for uh, for 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 short uh, for short time uh, visiting and now we are targeting a second wave of segments which has family for example uh, segments of uh, of tourists because they stay longer and they come with in in a group but of course this means that there is a, another challenge in developing diverse diversifying the product animation products etc which is something we are also working on and of course we are now targeting new markets so of course, and emerging markets like the BRICS and the Eastern Europe markets, uh, because we believe that there is also uh, um, a potential for us to grow our share of market. And this we do it by traditional ways of marketing. We work a lot with the distribution and the, the partnership with the, with the tour operators, but we believe now, uh, considering also the share of tourists that we bring to Morocco, which has a lot of changed a lot uh, because we used to have 70% of the share of our our, our uh, marketing, I mean, the tourists coming to Morocco, we're coming with tour operators, now it's the opposite. So we bring more individual tourists, that tourists come in with groups. So meaning that it is also a challenge in the way we are marketing. We, of course, need to work with the distribution, with the tour operators, the classic tour operators. We need to work on, on the air transportation and we do a lot on that, but we also need to focus on digital marketing, and there is also an important plan with the tourism board. They are working on it to develop this kind of e-marketing and to use the social media, to use to use the B2C platforms at the national level, but also pushing the regions to develop their own platforms. So this is the challenge for us now, is to achieve this second wave, this, second, this other way of marketing the destination using the social media media, using the websites, using the online operators, but also using creative economy as a mean of development. 
The human resources is also a challenge and issue. We work on that, but maybe uh, uh, in terms of time, we don't have time to go through it. But two main issues is to develop the skills also of the people who are going to work in the industry because the quality of service is very important. And also we are talking about new challenges, new trends of consuming. The people who are going to work on, on, in the sector need to be aware of all those trends, all those new technologies, all those ways of promoting tourism, all those way of bringing service to the tourists we are we are we are we are targeting and the other one is the attractivity of the sector itself for people to work in it and this is something we work on we try to work on with the professionals and the private sector because it's important that people who come to tourism are also have visibility on their evolution because tourism generally creates jobs but but we need to also to talk about sustainable jobs and jobs that give to the people who are working in the sector visibility on their evolution that they can be proud of working in the sector and this is also an issue that we try to work on and there is also a plan about competitiveness which is important the sector of tourism is really majority composed of SMEs which needs really to uh, to, to be um, to be given some assistance technical assistance and financial assistance and in this regard we also include all those new um, new uh, challenges like sustainable tourism like the technologies we push really those SMEs to include those kind of uh, of uh, new issues in the way they are they are managing their companies and at the last but not the least and the most important and the one I, I, I like most is the plan for sustainability. All what, what I've been talking about in terms of developing our touristic strategy, I mean, aims at the end of the day to develop a sustainable tourism strategy, but we also try to have a plan to make it possible. So, of course, in the planning phase, as I said, we are trying to have this fair distribution of the wealth issued from tourism, having those eight destinations uh, growing together to be competitive internationally, but also we did also plan our objective of doubling the size of the sector by thinking taking into consideration the assets, but also the constraints. So we have been really innovative in this, in this way because we try to, to, to have uh, an assessment, uh, an environmental assessment, and also to take into consideration the pressure that tourism is going to have on the local communities. And then we, we made some benchmark and, and put the, the borderline that we don't want to go beyond so that we can make uh, tourism really sustainable for the people and bringing added value and not the, the opposite. This is in the planning phase, but if we want to have a sustainable destination, we need to make sure that in all the life cycle approach, in the, dev in the fa phases of developing tourism, we tra take into consideration sustainability. So we try to use different tools to make sure that in the phase of investment, the investors respect some rules so that we have sustainable investment, but also in the phase of, explore, of, uh, of operations, we, we, we try also to put some conditions uh, in, uh, through the regulation, the regulation, but also through the incentives to push the operators to operate in a sustainable manner. And then we also are trying to work on the evaluation because if we say we want to be a model in terms of sustainability in the Mediterranean region, because this is the position in which we choose for our, for our tourism in Morocco, we need to have some figures, we need to have some monitoring tool. So we also work on that and we, we, we uh, and then we, we have this, uh, we have this, uh, this uh, life cycle approach in terms of sustainability and also regarding marketing, we try to, to put uh, the, the assets of sustainability, this authenticity, identity, the cultural identity of Morocco and all the assets that we include in sustainability in also our marketing strategy. And Morocco is really very engaged, of course, in, sustainable, in developing um, sustainable tourism in Morocco, but as the ambassador says, you know, Morocco 
has chosen sustainability as a way of, of development uh, as a whole. And he also wants to, to be um, at, at the, the front in terms of, um, of defending this sustainable development. So you have talked about the climate change issue and the, 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 tru the, the choice that Morocco has, do has done in terms of energy and so on, and being in the front in the scene as a leader in terms of sustainable development. And for tourism, is the same. We've been very active internationally in promoting sustainable tourism as a, as a lever of development, as, as, a, as, a, as a sustainable tourism as a, in the agenda of development in the United Nations. So we've been actively participated, participating in, in the, the international task force who was created by the UN when they were preparing for the, the CDD, with the, the, which was supposed to, to work on the, on the priorities for sustainable development and uh, we've been also very active in uh, in the global partnership for sustainable tourism which emerged from from the recommendations of this CDD uh, and uh, and which which we, we was a really a very important partnership including countries and also NGOs and uh, and financial institutions to advocate the sustainable tourism cause internationally and to uh, this this really conducted to have sustainable tourism present in in the um, in the sustainable development goals because it's the first time that we have tourism mentioned in the sustainable development goals and morocco have been there during all those 10 years of work we have been uh, we we have been the, the, the CEO of the Global Partnership for Sustainable Tourism from 2013 to 2015. And now this partnership has been transformed into the 10, what, what is called the 10YFP, which is the 10-year framework of programs for sustainable tourism. And uh, we are, uh, Morocco is one of the co-leads of this program with the UNWTO, France, and uh, South Korea. So this is also to say that we are trying to do our best to advocate sustainable tourism internationally and sh to showcase how important it is in terms of, um, of bringing socio-economic uh, development. So maybe I will stop here because when I start talking about sustainable tourism, I don't stop. Maybe I will just add a comment saying that what all what have we, we, we did uh, until now is working on the offer, structuring the strategy and the approach. But what is important to uh, change the scale because I think the main issue for sustainable tourism globally is to, sh to change the perception of sustainable tourism as a niche uh, tourism as ecotourism only, but to to make it very um, a general approach, something which is it's, when we talk about tourism, we don't need to add sustainable. We need to say this is a general approach. And if we want to work on that, we, of course, need to work on the offer, uh, working on the regulations, on the incentives, on the monitoring tools, on uh, promoting the, the success stories. But we need to work on the consumer. So this is the second phase. We need to work on the consumer to make him more aware about sustainability, but also we are consumers aware of sustainability, but when, when we want to consume sustainably, we need to have some demonstrations, we need to someone to tell us how we can consume, so this is very important now to address the consumer to make this sustainable tourism a general approach and not only a perception of a niche economy or a niche, uh, a niche in, in uh, an offer in general of tourism. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope I haven't been so too long and I am ready for your questions. Thank you very much, uh, dear Miss Raudis. And I would like to ask you to stay on the stage and also Your Excellency, can I invite you again to uh, join uh, her and now I'd like to open the floor for your question and comment. Okay, coming. Thank you again for your speech. It was very uh, interesting here. Uh, I come from Slovakia. My question is just uh, today we hear a lot of uh, about the sustainable um, tourism, and you already said about you have some. Um, 
regulation about it. Um, my question is like, uh, do you have any limits behind that uh, Morocco no way want to go behind? And, or in some region you don't want to have any investment? Is there some limits? Thank you. Um, I, will, I, will not, I will not say that we have, I mean, this limit, but we put all the regulation, you know, in Morocco in general, in, for the investment in general, not specifically for tourism, we have a very important regulation that is that have been adopted regarding, you know, the, the, the seaside, for example. If you want to invest in the seaside, we have a brand new uh, law which have been adopted about that, making that you have some regulations that and some specifications you need to, to respect regarding, you know, the respect about the, the line of the coast. You cannot construct in, in, in a distance. And there are also uh, a law that, in, that uh, makes it mandatory that you have a study, an impact study for the investment you are doing, environmental impact study. So you need to have this authorization about a commission, which is a multi-sectorial commission that examines your study and see your plan for limiting your impact on environment. And regarding tourism, we also are trying to push beyond that. And we are trying to, because tourism is a regulated sector, so the uh, touristic activities, uh, if you know, if you want to have a hotel, you need to be classified by the ministry of by 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 the government. And uh, in this classification, for example, we are looking into the we are we are uh, we are um, renewing the, the the classification criteria, and we are putting some criteria on sustainability in terms of uh, regarding uh, water use, regarding uh, energy efficiency, regarding. In, um, regarding sensibilization of the consumer, sensibilization of the workers, and also for the investment in tourism, more and more we try to push because, you know, if you want to attract tourism, you need to have a balance between the conditions you impose and also the, uh, the attractivity of the investment. But more and more we try to impose some conditions. For example, we have been the first sector uh, imposing for the, for the, the developer for resorts in the beach resort uh, to have plant for the reuse of water. So the golf must be, for example, if, if you develop golfs, you need to have a plant for the reuse of water. So you can you can um, you can you can use this water to to the green to the to the green I mean areas you have in your in your resorts. So. Uh, this is, this is the, the issue with sustainable tourism. You need to develop because it's also an important part of sustainability, but you need to put some, some, uh, some conditions. And when we planned our strategy, we, we looked at this and, and we, tr we try to orient investments in some destinations to, to some activities regarding to the constraints that we can have in terms of environment or also in terms of, uh, of pressure we are putting on the soil. Yep. Questions? Comments? Hmm? For me personally, your country is a big dream. I really would like to have chance as soon as possible to visit it, and uh, uh, we'll be really very happy. Um, yeah, final, final, um, if you have. From your side, final comments, uh, if you have, of course, Your Excellency. Okay. Well, uh, again, thank you very much. It's always uh, very interesting to share with the uh, I mean, uh, young population, young people here present with us. Uh, I hope that they will uh, uh, be interested more and more about uh, the Kingdom of Morocco, which is, uh, I would like to stress this uh, aspect, uh, in the direct neighboring of Europe. Probably now what is uh, dominating, you know, the political scene, the debate uh, in Europe in general, and particularly in this uh, very interesting and the hospital country like Germany is the question of uh, migration and the uh, refugees. We are speaking about tourism. You know, uh, as said by Mrs. Secretary General uh, last year, more than 10 million tourists, uh, among uh, which a lot of Europeans, the majority of Europeans, came to Morocco. 
the best condition possible. So this is, uh, you know, trends from both sides. And we have to, to anticipate the future. We have to deal, of course, with the problematics. We have to, I mean, fight against the illegal, uh, let's say, activities, be it for migration or refugees. Etc. But at the same time, we should focus more and more developing all our potential, all the opportunities offered for both sides. And for us, Germany is a very important, uh, of course, country and also market for tourism. And the, the strategy developed currently by our authorities, by the governance, it, uh, it is not because Mrs. Secretary General is here, <sighs> but I would like to stress that if the tourism sector is uh, experiencing some uh, success currently, as I said, with the resilience, but also with the vision presented to you, because of the governance also is changing very deeply and strongly in Morocco. Uh, just to refer to one aspect of uh, the uh, various aspects of the governance, this is an open debate within the, the family of tourism in Morocco, but also all those interested. We organize for periodically the so-called ASIS, if you if we show like a forum like you, the one we are here today, uh, very open with all those interested, the public sector, the private sector, the professionals, even some consultants coming, dialoguing. As I said, also for the political, uh, you know, development in Morocco, in we are developing this culture of exchanging, of debating. Uh, I do hope as we did uh, with you this afternoon, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, too. Once again, Your Excellency, Ms. Secretary General. And now I'm very pleased on behalf of you, actually, on behalf of Moroccan Embassy, to invite you for a reception. Welcome. <laughs> 